Greetings again, YouTube. I want to begin by thanking those of you who are beginning to subscribe. It's awesome to see that I'm starting to bring in an audience, and hopefully we can spread this thing out there. We're moving closer to the improbable. It would have been astronomically improbable for me to have pulled in a Pat Condell type following after only uploading my first video into this vast ocean that is YouTube. But I uploaded that first video anyway, and the first in a series of smaller, yet attainable improbabilities occurred, being that someone actually viewed it. A while after that, my first subscriber and other minor improbabilities have accumulated to where I am now. Nowhere near that summit of mass viewers, but methodically climbing the mountain nonetheless. That, of course, is the footing behind this video, dealing with the myth of irreducible complexity. There is this misunderstanding among theists that there are only two choices when dealing with the question of how life has come to the point that it has. Design or chance. Those are both horrible choices. The idea that we came to be through random chance is absolutely absurd. Chance could not have produced the variety and the cohesion that we observe today. If it were up to chance, I might very well have an arm growing out of my ass. Design doesn't do us any better, though. In fact, design only exacerbates the problem. With all the complexity of life, the cosmos, and the laws of physics, which dictate everything in the universe, it would take a creator of equal or even greater complexity to have created it. If complexity must be created, then something would have had to created the creator. And of course, something then must have created that, and so on, and so on with an infinite regress of creators and creation. With both of those out, it may look hopeless, but there is a third option, natural selection. Natural selection is the only known mechanism that can take simple improbability and through accumulation of traits build complexity, climbing, as Richard Dawkins put it, Mount Improbable. Looking down from current complexity to the simplicity at the base, it's easy to see how an organ such as the eye could be considered irreducibly complex. The eye, just like everything else, evolved through natural selection. It's easy to see where having a 10% functioning eye would better suit survival than no eye at all. And furthermore, where an organism with 20% of an eye would have an advantage over one with only 10%, and building in complexity as more advantage is to be had. Now, I don't remember where I first read this example, but a parallel can be made with man-made structures. In this example, I'll use Paul Brown Stadium, because it's my video, and I'm a Bengals fan. If I remove the one support beam from the stadium, the whole structure would collapse. So, it might be said by someone, that Paul Brown Stadium is irreducibly complex. 
that would be inaccurate, though, because the structure wasn't just plopped there all in one piece. It was constructed over time, and in its intermediate stages, supported by scaffolding. Now, I know that you're going to say that the stadium was designed, but that's besides the point. It's an inanimate structure, and not bound by the laws of evolution. Through the process of replication, life is capable of change and adaptation. Buildings are not. But the parallel can be drawn nonetheless. Organisms evolve over time with extra parts and redundancy until a point comes where those extra parts are no longer advantageous, but a hindrance. Through their inactiveness, they can become infected or rupture, such as an appendix does. When that occurs, the unneeded redundant parts begin to fade away through the generations, leaving behind the functioning organ. Examples in humans can easily be pointed out, such as, again, the appendant, uh, appendix. Sorry, I fucked that one up there. Kind of fitting, considering the appendix is God's little fuck-up. Um, tonsils, and wisdom teeth. Which, you know, can be seen fading out of the human gene pool. Now, personally, I'm operating on an older genetic model because I have the space in the back of my jaw that allows my wisdom teeth to come in without a problem. But that's a rarity, though. Much like a person who still has a sixth finger. The world is much more amazing when seen outside the box of human imagination through the eyes of science. Because, um, if our exploration into space has shown us anything, our imagination is very limited, and, you know, the truth is always much more surprising. It's foolish to merely cop out and claim irreducible complexity or God as the cause for something you can't explain. Because there's always a scientist who's more than willing to put that claim to the test. I want to thank you all for watching, and um, to those of you who are, you know, try to spread this one out there. This is, um, this one's important.